that was a really um, difficult decision for a lot of reasons and one of them was that I got thousands of emails from people talking about how the music helped them through a hard time. And whenever you start to read people's stories, you start to just love them, even if you don't know them. And, and the same thing is like, when I'm sitting there weeping over these emails, I start praying for these people. When you start praying for somebody, you just start loving them. And so it was a really hard thing to let go, knowing that it was time. It was a season that I had to go into to learn what it meant to be a mom and trust that, that there was, it was gonna be okay. And so it's good to know what season you're in. You know, we have a lot of passions in our hearts sometimes and a lot of things we want to do. And sometimes there's seasons for those things. And so when I left, it was still heavy on me. How do I stay connected if I can? And so when this guy called me, Gino Leonard, and asked me, do you want to write some, write some lyrics and a melody for this song, for the Underworld soundtrack? Um, and so it's this vampire movie. And I was like, yeah, sure. Can I bring my baby? He's like, sure, you bring your baby. So it was great. Um, and uh, I was like, can I see the movie? And he's like, no, I can't see the movie. It's not out. <laughs> well, so I found a, a synopsis of the movie online um, from a critic or whatever. And I was like, how can I relate to this movie plot here? And so I was reading this story, and then I started to started to resonate with me. So there's this vampire and this werewolf. I'm going to ruin the movie if you haven't seen it. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, so this vampire and this werewolf have a baby, and the baby is like the most powerful creature. She can defeat any vampire and any werewolf because she's both or whatever. And so the mom of the baby gets frozen in ice somehow, and then the dad ends up dying. And so the baby ends up getting taken into this facility where she's monitored and under and heavily medicated because they, you know obviously she's kind of weird. Um, and so she doesn't know who she is. For 16 years, she lives in this facility, and she's like on lockdown and in a fog because of everything, all the medications. And so her mom wakes up somehow out of the ice or something, and she ends up um, realizing she has this child. She hasn't. She needs to go tell the child who she is. She doesn't know who she is. She's an amazing creature, and she has to go tell her what she's made for. And so she goes through all this hell fighting all these demonic werewolf creatures and she gets to her baby she pulls him, her kid out of this hospital or whatever and the girl's sitting in the car she doesn't know what's going on she's kind of freaking out her medications are off she's starting to get like her crazy self and then the werewolf like jumps in the car and she turns around she's like Bruh! and she like pulls the thing in half with her bare hands she, like rips it apart and i thought this reminds me of jesus <laughs> so um trying to figure out a way to relate um, and so I, I realized you know I never heard the story of what Jesus told until I was way older and, and that I, it made sense to me that it was actually beautiful and I always felt very hypocritical and hateful and all these things and um, to me and I felt isolated I didn't get it and I hated Christians and I hated God but when I heard the story and I understood it it was actually really beautiful and, then, and so whenever um, the story is that God made people, they're his children, to be his children. We're meant to be these amazing, powerful, beautiful, glorious creatures. And then we get sucked down into this world that's, we have a freedom. We can be freely choose to be destructive or freely choose to be glorious. And, we, and then all around us, these choices are being made and we're stuck in this world full of hatred and death. And we're meant to like be these eternal, beautiful creatures that just live and, and get more alive as we go. And instead, we just start choosing death over and over and over. And we've chosen it. And our destiny is death because we chose it. And it's just God just looking at his heart's broken because these are his creatures. They don't know what they're made for. And so he's like, look, I'm just going to become a man. I'm going to show them what it looks like. Yeah. So he becomes a man. And Jesus is... That person and he lives and he's powerful he's strong he's brave he stands up to corruption he's kind he's merciful he's completely just at the same time he's he's like this beautiful picture of what we're created to be he's miraculous and glorious he stands as a and he subdues the earth he can 
he, he stands as, as a child of God and he shows you a saw what we're made to be. And then he's like, and I know that we look at that, I know they're looking at, he's like, I know they're looking at me wanting to do this and they can't yet, so I'm just going to take care of the fog of death over them. I'm just going to die in their place. So he lets himself be murdered by his own creation, hanging naked and bleeding and shameful on the cross to take all of our shame on himself so we don't have to carry it anymore if we just trust him. And then he wipes it away in the moment we trust him because he's God, he can do that. So, he, so that's his story. And then he dies and he raises from the dead because he wants you to know you're made to live forever, to overcome death. And if you trust him, you can. And so that's the story I never heard and remind me of this vampire movie. And so this song has a double meaning. It's called Heavy Prey. Let's go. 
Yeah.